listening to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point on AAFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. The program is Focal Point. The number is 888-589-8840 if you'd like to join the program. Let's grab a quick call from Harold in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, Harold, if we can grab Harold, come on in. Harold, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hi, Brian. Thanks for taking the call. I just yeah. wanted to make a, a quick comment, and then I'll get off the, so you can take another call. Um, concerning anybody thinking that President Obama and his administration would not um, turn drones on innocent Americans, all they got to do is look back to uh, some of the things he's done since his first uh, getting elected the first time, wanting to, him and Eric Holder wanting to try terrorists as civilians, uh, calling the workplace, the massacre at Fort Hood, a workplace uh, violence instead of what it was, which was Islamic terrorism. Mm -hmm. Um, But the last and not least thing, the only place I ever heard about it mentioned was on AFR when he said, I will not tolerate any negative comments about Islam. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's very clear what his preference is in this country, and it's not Christianity. Yeah, he he basically went to the U.N. and said, we will not tolerate any critical comments about Islam in our country. Right. And when they're and blaming it all on that on that video and how that video was inexcusable, we can't have people, you know, questioning the wisdom of the prophet and the glories and the wonders of Islam. Can't we're not going to let that happen in our country? So I, I think about that when he starts talking about, you know, uh, not just the drones, but you know, buying ammunition for homeland security, the tanks, the whole bit. I don't know what they've got up their sleeve, but I don't. I don't. There's never been a president in my lifetime that I've distrusted more than him and. I would say, I can't speak for the rest of the country, but um, here in Oklahoma, we're not giving up our arms or our ammunition because uh, we know which way this guy's leaning. So yeah. that's all I wanted to say. Okay, well, thank you, Harold. You know, speaking of the Second Amendment, John Lott, who is a tremendous scholar on the issue of gun rights, he said that President Obama told him to his face back in the mid-'90s when they were at the University of Chicago and they talked on numerous occasions. They were both teaching there, John Lott and Barack Obama. This is before he was even a state senator. They were teaching together at the University of Chicago, had many conversations about guns. And John Lott said that Obama told him directly to his face, I don't believe people should be able to own guns. So President Obama has never believed in the Second Amendment. And remember, back then he was supposed to be some kind of a constitutional scholar teaching constitutional law, and he did not believe that people ought to be able to own guns. I don't see any reason to believe that he has changed uh, his mind about all of that. You know, in 1996, he supported a ban on handguns, according to John Lott. 1998, he supported a ban on the sale of all semi-automatic guns. 2004, he advocated banning gun sales within five miles of a, a school or a park that would have shut down every gun store in America virtually. You go five miles from a park or a, a school, you're going to run into a gun store. They're all located within five miles of a gun or a park, virtually every one. And so John Lott says, uh, look, he's the most anti-gun president ever. And one of the things that Lott says, you know, we got to be concerned about is that his judicial appointments, because he can pack the courts and maybe doing that right now. We had one, the Republicans blocked one of his nominees today, who was a real anti-gun activist. She would have been a terribly activist judge on the Second Amendment in court, but the Republicans managed to stop her this morning. Caitlin Halligan uh, was her name. Uh, Let's go to Jimmy Marshall, uh, Maryland. Jimmy, you are on Focal Point with Brian Fisher. What's on your mind? Yeah, good morning. Yes, sir. That was, uh, or afternoon, I mean. Yeah, you were talking about joining the military, and I was just going to point out that Jesus never belonged to any military organization so a lot of people they serve in their own way i guess well so what you're now are uh, i'm not sure where you're going with that or what well, your what well, your point is was we need to have more people serving uh the government and, and the military i guess now are you talking about the fact because we'll, we'll get people that that call in here and i'll get emails from people or posts on facebook or Twitter, whatever, that I've got no right to speak about 
military issues because I've never served. And are you saying that's obviously an unfair criticism because oh, yeah, Jesus never Amendment. served in the military? We have the First Amendment. You can speak about whatever you want, I guess. Yeah. But I'm I, just saying that uh, the one caller said that you need more people join the military. And... Uh, all right. Well, again, I'm I'm not exactly sure, Jimmy, what you're saying there. I think we got a bad connection, so I may have to uh, to let you go. Uh, so I'm not sure what what Jimmy's point uh, was there, but I think what he was what he was saying, the gist of what he was saying, is that people that uh, m may criticize people because they didn't join the military or should have joined the military, or we should have more people join the military, not to forget that Jesus never served in the military. And that is a true fact, but you know, one day he will, you know, one day, uh, he, he's going to serve as the commanding general, according to revelation 19 of the armies of the heavens. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago, played the Johnny cash song, you know, where John is writing, I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse. The one sitting on it is called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. So when Jesus comes back, he's coming back to make war. His eyes are like a flame of fire. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the armies of heaven were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. So Jesus wasn't in the military, but he will be one day. And when he is, everybody better look out. Now, um, let's grab uh, clip number 10. Uh, you know, we, we've had this story. This is Janet Napolitano. We had this story about the ICE, Immigration Customs Enforcement, releasing 2,000 illegal aliens, 2,000 Criminals, And remember, according to the standards that have been set by the Obama administration, these people have to be repeat offenders. You have to be a you have to be convicted of at least three misdemeanors before DHS, before Obama's Border Patrol people will even show up to detain somebody. So these are people that have a record. They've got a criminal record and they were releasing a thousand two thousand when this came out. And now we find uh, the release, the discovery of an internal U.S. Customs and Immigration Enforcement document or memo that showed that they were planning to release 1,000 illegal alien criminals a week starting in February 15 and going all the way to the end of this month. All of this was in anticipation of the sequester, and they were going to release 5,000 illegal aliens into the streets. We've talked about this before. Now it's been confirmed by the release or the discovery of this internal memo. And again, this is, you know, and, and Joe Arpaio says, look, hey, you don't want to take care of these illegal aliens. Give them to me. I'll put them in my tent city. I'll give them pink underwear. I'll have them eating bologna sandwiches. You can give them to me, and I will be happy to take care of them. And he says, I will not even charge the federal government a penny. If you're concerned about budget, this whole sequester thing, and you've got to watch your pennies, you just give them to me. I won't charge you a dime, and I will be happy to detain them for you. So again, it's just another indication. This is all about politics. It's all about trying to make the pain as public as possible, even though there's no foundation to it. Janet Napolitano uh, talking about the, the danger in airports and how flights are going to be delayed and it's going to, the wait times are going to be doubled and reporters call these airports that she mentioned. She, that the, they ask her, well, well, what airports are you talking about? She stumbles around and says, well, LAX and, you know, you probably got Atlanta and you probably got O'Hare. So the reporters after the, the, the press conference with Janet Napolitano, they call LAX. Hey, wanted to find out how all these horrible delays are going on. And they say, what are you talking about? We got no delays here. Uh, O'Hare, call them. What about these 200% wait time increases? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Everything's going smoothly here. Call Atlanta. Same deal there. It's just all a lie. It's all one big fat lie. And the same time she was saying this, you could go to the FAA. I tweeted out a, a tweet to the map, the FAA map. They've got an official map, FAA, monitoring departure times at major airports all over the country. Everyone was green except for San Francisco. And their problems had nothing to do with TSA agents or air traffic controllers. They just had weather. 
place was socked in, and so it was delaying some arrivals and some uh, departures. So she was absolutely just lying through her teeth. And here, uh, here's who she blames for the for them getting caught red-handed. Here's who Janet Napolitano blames for this information coming to light. Clip 10. With sequester looming and the end of uh, this continuing resolution in a couple of weeks, it's like the perfect storm. Uh, we really are ha have to manage so many different things because we don't have a budget. Um, but uh, the normal ebb and flow uh, accounted for many of those releases. And these are people who are removed or they were bonded out or their, their status was changed or for whatever reason. Um, I think, however, for sequester, Getting ahead of that looming deadline, uh, career officials made the decision that there were some very, uh, what I would call very low-level, low-risk detainees that could be put into a supervised release program, and that's what happened. So she's blaming the media for releasing the information and blaming Bush. Again, as we said before, these are career officials, and we inherited these people, just like Obama inherited the deficit. So Janet Apollo say, saying, uh, I inherited the career officials that made this bozo uh, decision. Now, uh, Jeb Bush, we'll play this clip on the other side, clip number two, the Jeb Bush clip. Jeb Bush has got himself in hot water. He's actually backtracking already. We'll play the soundbite uh, dealing with, uh, with Jeb Bush because he's got an immigration proposal that's actually got some stuff in it that's not too bad. And it, it's stuff that would freak out the Democrats. I don't like it because it be, because it legalizes people that have broken our law, rewards them, and I don't think we ever ought to, uh, ought to reward lawbreaking, and his proposal would do that. But what Jeb Bush said in a book, and this is out in the book. You know, he didn't say this at a press conference. Or he didn't say this in a private conversation. Uh, he, he didn't say it in some kind of town hall meeting. He wrote it in a book that illegal immigrants should never be allowed to become citizens of the United States. And that was the exchange that he would make if you come forward and you admit that you broke our laws, we'll let you stay. We'll legalize you. You can have legal residency, but you never, ever, for the rest of your life, will be able to become an American citizen. And he would say to them, look, if you want to become a citizen, you've got a pathway. Go home and wait in line. Now, he's already backing away from that because he got drilled. Uh, it's a more conservative position than Marco Rubio has taken and way more conservative than the Amnesty 8. Anyway, we'll play the soundbite, talk about it when we come back. Focal Point, AFR Talk.